All right, let's do this. I have got a very exciting stream today. Uh, everything is taking shape with this Lua scripting, okay? Uh, I fixed up the problems off camera. They were really annoying, they were really tedious, and uh, everything works. Everything works. Well, everything works. A very simple thing works, and we're going to see if we can take it to a really awesome place today. So uh, let's get rid of this cube. Cube time is over. Um, so. So this now works, right? I can run uh, a simple loop. And we can do exactly this. Uh, let me rebuild real quick. And then if we run... I've set up a few cool... Oop. Ignore that, okay? Pretend you didn't see that. We're going to get back there. But we're going to we're gonna do it better than I did it before, okay? That There is no triangle. Uh, the triangle was a... Oh, shit. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, give me one second. I think... I'm doing something weird. Um, hold on, hold on. You, you gotta, you gotta work with me. You gotta work with me here. Okay. Uh, how is everyone? How is everyone doing? Uh, I'm getting awesome feedback from people on YouTube. So if people are watching this on YouTube, thank you very much. Also, people are maybe wondering about my hands. Let me, let me tell you a story about my hands uh, while I do this. Oh, always a risk swapping over to an open browser window. Didn't know what was on there. So, uh, this is the white-backed Australian magpie okay gorgeous birds some of my favorite birds uh also at this time of year they like to swoop people so they they do they do this right these things are pretty pretty terrifying um so i was walking yesterday right i decided i was gonna go for a nice walk i was gonna explore part of melbourne i'd never seen before um yeah this is this is the photo right this is it right here is my yeah good um so Exploring part of part of Melbourne I'd never been to before, going for a nice walk, and uh, I'd kind of packed up some food. I was gonna walk all morning. I got about ten minutes away from my house, and I just hear this like whoo, as something goes over my head, and I, I'm getting swooped by a magpie. So I pull my backpack up over my head, and I'm running, I'm legging it while this magpie is sweeping me, and uh, I, the magpie didn't even hit me in the end, right? It was swooping at me. It didn't hit me. I just tripped and fell. And, uh, kind of, yeah, scraped up my hands, scraped up my elbows, scraped up my knees. Was a pretty bad fall, because my, my head, arms were over my head holding this backpack, I was, like, hunched forward. As I went down, I was like, oh, crap, <laughs> this isn't going to be elegant. And, uh, yeah, so I can still type. There are, there are lots of things I can't do at the moment. I have, like, a patch maybe this big on my hand of, of skin that has just been completely scraped off. But, um... I can still type, and that's all that matters, right? Using a mouse, a little bit awkward. Trackball, a little bit awkward. Uh, thankfully, I'm a Vim wizard now, so I can just do everything with a keyboard. So this was uh, a decent chunk of my weekend. Uh, that is fun. That is fun. Um, I was meant to do something behind the scenes while I was talking about this, and I did not do it, uh, which is also fun. Uh, we uh, 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 hold on, hold on. Okay, wow, it's like nothing happened. Um, we are gonna clean up whatever is in this distribution. Actually, no, I don't think we need to. I think it it's just gonna force rebuild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now if I run, ah, that's funny. Weird. I don't know what happened there. Um, don't know what that could have been. Okay, so for just a quick refresher from last time, right? We now have an interface. Uh, when we're running these Lua scripts on the PS2, uh, hold on. One more thing I need to do here, actually. God, this is a bit, it's a bit disorganized of me, isn't it? Um, I'm really liking this windowing manager. You're gonna, you're seeing behind the curtain here for how I actually do this. Uh, I've customized DWM so that I can, like, change the height of this stack and it doesn't damage for us. Also, also, man, I'm forgetting everything today. My desktop background's there. Okay, now we're good to go. Ow. I, I can't clap my hand at the moment, Okay. That hurts. Um, so we have an interface into doing DMA transfers. Uh, we can send buffers. We have this buffer interface. We build a draw buffer uh, every frame that we fill with crap and then send off to various parts of the system. So for now, we're doing nothing, right? Uh, all we're doing, we, we have a clear color, so we're clearing the screen to red. We start the frame, we end the frame, we don't put anything in the frame. Uh, I was experimenting with, with some stuff. We'll get to that in a second. But um, for now, so let's let's prove that we can kind of impact this, right? So I can go here, uh, and when we run, we have a green screen instead of a red screen. Perfect, right? Easy, right? 
We love it. We love it. Um, so let's add behavior to this, right? And this is the kind of thing that was really, really awkward to do in uh, just straight C. Okay, so let's go, let's say counter equals zero, counter equals counter plus one. Uh, if counter is greater than, let's say if it's greater than 500, it's greater than well, 60 frames a second. Let's go five seconds, then, so this is going to run every frame, we're locked to 60 frames a second because every frame we're going to wait for vsync. Um, if a counter is more than 300, then let's say GS, let's change the clear color, color to red. And Okay, so now if I run this, we're going to see green for about five seconds and then hopefully with enough luck, did I do something wrong? I maybe did something wrong. Oh, I'm also like printing out the buffers, so um, PCSX2 just kind of goes supersonic here, trying to trying to keep up with all this printing, right? Every single frame, it's printing out the buffer, it's drawing, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, this was necessary to debug what was actually going wrong before. Uh, okay, something went wrong there. If counter greater than 300, uh, counter was zero, count counter. That would explain it. Okay, uh, now let's see what happens. After about five seconds, hopefully, if we've done everything right this time. It changes to red. Cool. So we can add new behavior and new logic to this very, very easily and without actually recompiling any of our C code, right? Uh, and that may seem like a small difference here, like we're still rerunning, but this is actually, uh, in my opinion at least, a lot quicker. So what is also interesting here, right? So actually, hold on, let's, let's rerun real quick and look at this buffer, okay? So we start the frame and this happens. Uh, this so for example, and I've talked about it a little bit about this in earlier episodes, I'm going to talk a lot more about this in the future, but here is the start of a GIF tag, a uh, message that goes to the graphics interchange unit of the PlayStation 2. Uh, it, it wants to set two registers through this interface called A and D. So the way GIF tags work, it, it, you basically set registers in the graphics synthesizer, which is like the rasterizer, uh, and when you set registers via a and D, which is uh, identified by this identifier here, this uh, E, which is, you know, uh, decimal uh, <laughs> uh, 14. Uh, it means you're going to, like, write to them directly, basically. So this is setting a register uh, which overrides primitive information to zero, and then it's setting... Uh, I don't remember what one B is. Hold on, we can actually look this up, right? So if we, uh, if we go GS reg, if we go to the file where these are defined, we can actually search for 1B, and we can see... Uh, PR mode, yeah. Yeah, so this is kind of like an override, I think, basically overriding primitive information, because then it's going to draw a bunch of crap that actually clears the screen, uh, and then it resets this to a more default state, or something like that, right? I'm not totally over this primitive override stuff. Um, primitives in this case being like triangle, rectangle, line, whatever, and if they're textured or shaded or, you know... Um, this override stuff's really interesting, and I, I may actually use it in the future, not really sure. Uh, and then when we end the frame, we do this, and this is just, uh, again, a gift tag. We're setting something via this A and D register. We're setting one thing to one register. This this is the one register. Uh, if this number was six, for example, you could have like six different registers in the lower uh, six, like registers represented by four bits, which in this case is one of these hexadecimal digits. It's complicated, right? And I have talked about this before. And and then it's gonna set, uh, this is the, the finish register, and it sets it to one saying, hey, this is the end of our drawing, this is the end of our frame, actually do the draw. Or something like that. This is all super imprecise language, um, because I, I am not an expert on this stuff yet, but I thought it would be cool, okay? And again, this was something really tedious and really not that fun to work out, but I thought it would be cool if instead of calling frame end, uh, if I could actually just write. So. So there's a direct link between the the gift tag we saw here. Uh, so for example, right, this is our one loop with the end of packet uh, tag set. This is our one register. This is the register we're writing. This is just like a padding bit um, or a padding word. Sorry, each of these are one 32-bit word. I thought that was a safe unit to work in from the Lua side. And so we've got this interface where we can actually like just arbitrarily build these buffers. And finally enough, if we run it we're going to see it behaves in exactly the same way, right? So uh, we've got an interface 
we can interact directly with the graphic synthesizer on a bit per bit level. Like this is literally setting a bit in a bit field, this, this digit eight here, uh, that's what this does. So this is really awesome, right? And what I wanna do, I wanna do some drawing of triangles with this and I wanna build a, a benchmark, right? I wanna build a really dumb benchmark that fills a buffer with a bunch of triangles and then draws it. I wanna see how many triangles we can get running on PCSX2 before we drop frames. Um, now, that's it's it's going to be a little bit imprecise. Uh, we're going to need to do something much more rock solid, something much more concrete in the future to actually like time how many triangles we're drawing per second if we want to run it on real hardware and, and uh, measure the performance. For now, we're just going to use PCSX2 because it's easy and because with my hands in this state, I can't easily uh, move things around and, and get set up, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully this, this heals pretty quickly. If it doesn't, I'm going to probably have to go see a doctor. Anyway, anyway, that's where we are right now. So, we've got an interface into the hardware, okay? Oh, and I also wrote some other stuff. Uh, if we look in this script folder, um, I I took the liberty of writing this out, right? So this is a GIF tag, and we can actually rewrite what I had before with this, uh, and I should probably do that. So, again, this was miserable. This was not fun or interesting to do. This is bit manipulation in a language that has no bit manipulation uh, operators. There's no logical and, there's no logical or, blah, blah, blah. Um, this just takes the information that goes into a gift tag, right? So the number of things that we uh, process, the number of loops, the number of times it goes around, uh, the, a list of registers, uh, you know, all, all this cool stuff. So, and then it actually has the uh, helper functions that we need to put data into a buffer that actually represents like color information or position information. A whole bunch of crap that uh, I've half tested. I accidentally leaked before the elf I'd made that actually draws a triangle that kind of takes some of the fun out of it. But uh, this has problems and I think I know how to solve some of them. Anyway, anyway, so let's rewrite this frame end and Eventually, we're not going to actually like supersede this, we're always going to do this in C, but just as a, an exercise, okay, let's rewrite this. Uh, so, local gif equals, we need to actually like load this file. Unfortunately, it seems like require is a no-go for uh, PS2 Lua. I'm probably going to have to implement my own version of this in the future, for now we're just going to do file. Uh, do file, host, uh, host script gif.lua. Perfect. Uh, and so we can say, if I head back over to what I have here, so gif.tag, okay, gif.tag, uh, gif.tag, we put it in the draw buffer, uh, it's going to be, well the flag is going to be zero, uh, because that tells us, this This just tells us the format that the tag's going to be in, we're always using format zero, aka packed mode, we're going to use image mode eventually, uh, when we need to do it, work with textures and stuff, that's going to be fun to work out, one loop, uh, it is is going to be an end of packet and then we give it a list of registers and in this case our list just has one element which is this uh, a and d register now we god I, I love having to remember what i put in my own interface okay set ad yeah so set ad uh we give it the buffer we give it a register identifier for because this is like the end of a frame we use the we write something into the gs finish register uh, which I just know is the magic number 61. We The first value we pass it is 1, the second value we pass it is 0. These two, uh, this is the lower part of a 64-bit uh, double word, and this is the upper part of a 64-bit double word. Altogether, this forms one quad word. Uh, just like this altogether forms one whole quad word as well. Uh, so this should be equivalent to this right buffer call, but a lot cleaner. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, yeah, cool. So this works. In conclusion, this works. Um, I have, I've got an old video of myself up here, right? And what's actually amazing about having streamed this whole process is I can pick up an old stream that I did. Look how much shorter my beard was, man. It's been a rough, uh, three months since then, or two months since then. Um, lockdown, man. So I could actually go in and look at this buffer and look at exactly what I had drawn here, uh, and exactly where this triangle was. So. We're going to use that as our basis for actually pushing a triangle through this this pipeline, but we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to do it using this interface so rather than doing it in C. We're rather than having like a scene or anything. We're just going to draw a triangle through this this interface. 
Uh, so let's let's actually get rid of this and go back to just using frame end because that's cool. It's a good proof of concept, but uh, it's not actually what I want to do. I want to keep this as my minimum example, okay? And so what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna copy this across. We're gonna copy script min. We're gonna copy it into script draw. Cool. So now, uh, perfect. I don't. We don't actually need. Actually, wait. Hold on. How have I gif dot lua? Yeah. Okay. So this write to buffer can go. I don't think we're going to use it. Or if we're going to use it, we can re-implement it. It's super simple. Um, so now what we want to do is draw a triangle, right? How do we draw a triangle? Well, the first thing we need to do is set the primitive mode, and we do that gif dot tag draw buffer. Uh, what do we do? So I've I've given myself a little helper here uh, for actually writing the data. But first we need to like that's that's the actual data that we write. Uh, first we need to create the tag. So the flag is going to be zero. Uh, the number of loops is going to be one. This is not going to be an end of packet because we're going to have like actual data after it. And then the register is going to be zero, I believe. Again, I'm going to look this up in PS2 SDK. Um, that is that is not the right shortcut. GS reg prim. Yeah, it's register zero. Perfect. Um, perfect, perfect. Okay. So we get this tag. And then I've got this awesome helper function here, which is going to write the actual body. Uh, set a D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Sorry, I'm being very silly here. We're setting it via the AD register. So we give it the AD register, and then we write a pair of a register descriptor and a value. Uh, gif dot prim AD. Prim AD. We give it the draw buffer. And now we have some information about the primitive. So the primitive type. Um, this is probably a good time to PS2 const. I, I defined a couple of constants that we're going to be using here. Um, this file will probably grow to ridiculous levels. I wasn't sure where to put this necessarily. I don't know if it'll all live in one place, but for now it can. Uh, so we're going to include this as well. Uh, let's call it P. Also, let's actually capitalize this. I think that makes a bit more sense, right? It's kind of like this is a package. Well, I don't know what the convention is in Lua. I'm going to go capitals for now. Uh, PS2 const. So well, we've got gif here. We just want to do a quick search and replace gif gif perfect. I mean, it's only in two places. It's not exactly a huge refactor. Okay, so p.prim.try uh, .try We're going to be drawing a triangle. Is it going to be shaded? No. Is it going to be textured? No. Is it going to be anti-aliased? No. And then we need to actually uh, give it our vertex data. So again, we make a gif tag. We use packed mode. Number of loops, we're going to say one. We're going to say uh, this is an end of packet because this is kind of weird. I don't necessarily know if this has to be true or false. This this is something that's going to be easier to experiment now we're in the world. Uh, and now the registers we set. Okay, so, and we can actually refer back here, right? When we're doing this, we're setting color, position, color, position, color, position. So we can do the same thing. Color, position, color, position, color, position. And these are just magic numbers that I happen to know off the top of my head. Um, or, you know, off the top of my head with some reference, right? Okay, so this is going to construct a gift tag for giving the data for one triangle. Now we just need to actually push the information in. Uh, and again, conveniently, I've got a helper for that. So gif packed RGBAQ. gif dot packed RGBAQ. What is the Q in RGBAQ? I don't really know. Uh, don't ask me. <laughs> it's not my friend. But I did learn from my last experience doing this that you have to actually set the alpha value to something, right? When I was struggling to draw triangles in this uh, in this series originally, it's because the alpha wasn't being set. Absolute nightmare. So red, green, blue, alpha. We don't. It's called RGBAQ. There's no actual Q value you pass in, or there kind of is. It's it's a little bit magic. And then GIF packed uh, X Y Z F. No X Y Z two. There's no F. There's also a, a register called XYZF2, it's a different thing. And we give it uh, an X. Our X is going to be, again, if we just kind of look at, at these numbers for a ballpark figure, let's say uh, 8,000, uh, well not 8,000, 0x8000, hex8000, this is going to be roughly the middle of the screen, and our Z is going to be 0. 
Uh, now we're going to copy this a few times. Well, we're going to copy it twice, right? Uh, so these these registers, this list of registers we're setting corresponds directly to the next row of things. Uh, these are these are double words. These are quad words. These are these are these are quad words, right? Yeah, four ints. These are quad words. So each one of these registers is set according to the value of a quad word. So what this does, right? It goes red, uh, one, we're setting color information, and it takes the next quad word. And then it goes, we're setting X, Y, Z information. It takes the following quad word. It goes, we're taking color information, quad word, position information, quad word, color information, quad word, position information, quad word. And uh, when you set these X, Y, Z registers, it kind of has a special meaning. And the graphic synthesizer knows where we're drawing triangles. We've had three sets of coordinates. Now I can do a triangle. It's triangle time. Um, but we can't, well, I mean, this is a point, right? Not a triangle. So what if we say, uh, 8, 8100, 800, and then 800, 8100. So we're going some distance in each direction. These are also, uh, fixed point numbers, not floating point numbers. The bottom four bits are going to be like a decimal place. Really weird, really weird system, really weird system. And this should work. Let's just run it and see what, oh no, hold on. Let's not run it and see what happens. Let's do, uh source ps2 lua.c let's change the file we're going to run off the bat uh draw.lua okay now that's not what i want i want to build first because i changed that thing now i want to run it and we've got a red triangle wow it's beautiful and our screen's going to change to red no it isn't did i get rid of that i got rid of that okay so let's change our clear color to something more sensible while we're going here um click color let's do my favorite color as of late 2b 2b uh that thanks Vim. To be to be. I love it. Okay. To be to be to be. Uh this is gonna look a little bit nicer. Yeah, that's nicer, isn't it? That is nicer. Um and now so this is cool, right? This is a little bit verbose. Uh let's Should we make a function to draw a triangle? Should we make a function that like generates vertices? I guess we have two ways of doing this. Let's go function try. Yeah, so let's, we'll call it try for now. We'll give it an x, we'll give it a y. Should we give it an x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, maybe? Does that make sense? And then we'll basically do this, right? Um, We'll give it a draw buffer and these things and it will just dump that triangle into the draw buffer given this like very restrictive very fixed format uh and we're gonna say we're gonna add these coordinates on to the center of the screen y1 uh x2 y2 plus x3 plus y3 um, and this color, yeah, we'll, we'll just fix everything to red for now. That's okay. That's workable. Uh, yeah, perfect. And this kind of ignores the header as well. So we'll just say try db, uh, let's go zero, zero, uh, uh, zero x 100, zero x 100, and zero x 200, zero. This should be okay. Yeah, a bit of a funkier triangle. Nice. So we can draw triangles. Um, let's go function quad. Okay, db uh, x, y width height. And uh, so this is going to be two triangles, right? This is going to be two triangles. So how do we do this? Uh, we do a try. Actually, we can draw a sprite as well. We'll do, we'll do everything as triangles for now because it's probably a little bit easier. So let's go triangle at x, y, x plus width, y, y plus height, uh, x, y plus height. So this gives us the right angle triangle here. And then we do the triangle try db. Uh, we go x, y plus h, x plus width, y plus h. And then we just do x plus width, y. Does this work? I don't know. And we need to update the number of loops here, but let's try it. Uh, we need to update the number of loops here. Let's try it out. Quad. 
uh, 100, 0x, 100, 0x, 100, uh, 0x, 200, 0x, 200. Let's see what happens. It might break. It blew up. That's fine. That's fine. Um, little execution error. Ah, here we go. Attempted to perform arithmetic on a new, on a nil value. Uh, line 26. And I love that Lua gives us, uh, gives us good errors like this, right? It's because I forgot a parameter, right? So it was saying h was nil. h was nil because we only had four arguments. They were getting mapped to, to this part of the function. Uh, we, we, missed, we missed the argument at the front. It's all good. And now we have a quad. That simple. So you can see, right, we've got this really simple interface where we can just directly put bits into a buffer and suddenly we can build these things up and we can actually interact with the hardware and very quickly get, you know, a higher level interface. We can say, put a put a quad here, put a rectangle here. And actually, this is going to bother me otherwise. Um, right. We want this to be called rect, not quad. Um, because because a, a quad can be, like, aligned in any way. A rectangle, I don't know. I, I In my experience, at least, right? If something if someone calls it a quad in, like, computer graphics game world, it can be rotated, whereas a rectangle tends to be axis aligned, right? Uh, a rectangle, anyway, anyway. It's all about those 90 degrees. Um, but rotation would be cool as well, and rectangles, of course, in, in real maths, can be rotated arbitrarily. Ow. Oh, man, it's really hard to not, like, bang my hands against stuff. I get very excited when I'm working on this. Okay, so the next thing we really need to think about here, if we want this to be, like, a higher level... Uh, well, actually, no, hold on. Hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go. Let's, like, let's make locals X and local Y. Uh, and let's maybe say... Hmm. Let's also say... No, hold on. Let's go, let's go back. Let's go back. I was thinking about benchmarking, right? So let's say scene equals blah. Now, hmm. What would be really good is if we could draw a bunch of stuff and then set this in the gift tag later. But that would mean, that would mean we would have to like get we would have to remember the head of the buffer and then have an interface to set an arbitrary word in that buffer, which is fine, which is fine, um, which is fine. Okay, this would work, this could work. For now, let's just say everything's a triangle and scene will just be a list of triangles. Um, but it's good to have that rect function as well. For i equals one, uh, for each, thing in the scene, we're going to say scene, uh, no, no, that's not what I want. I want to say scene I draw. Uh, and so let's say function new try y, uh, x3, y3. Let's, um, x01, so what I want is something that I can move around that has a really simple draw method, um, and we should probably use meta tables for this. Let's not use meta tables first, so let's say x equals 0, y equals 0, uh, and then, yeah, equals x01, X O, uh, Y O one. Oh, about B X equals X O one, X O two, B Y equals Y O one, Y O two. Isn't this so much nicer than having to do this stuff in C? Um, draw is going to be a function. Uh, it's going to be a method, so it'll have self as the only argument, uh, and we're going to say we're, we're going to. Current draw buffer. We're gonna do some gross global state hacking. Uh, current draw buffer try. No, hold on. It's the other way around. It's try current draw buffer uh, self dot x self dot y. We don't actually need to store these because they're going to be captured in like the the scope of the 
um, like the scope of the function, right? So self dot xo dot x plus xo one self dot y plus y o one self dot self dot x plus xo two self dot y plus y o two. Perfect, beautiful. And then we can also like move it around by changing the x and y. So uh, db draw buffer equals db. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And this will work. This will work. This will work beautifully. So we can actually like come down. We can make a scene that has some stuff in it. So let's go scene. Uh, new try. And it's going to have, like, it, let's say 100, 0, 0, 100, right? So it's going to be like a right angle triangle. And then let's have a new try uh, 40, 20, 200, 7, right? We'll just have some weird stuff. Three weird triangles uh, 10, 100, 30, 20. I think these are all valid triangles. It's, you always kind of have to do it in your head, right? Um, so what happens if I just run this right now? Does this work or does this crash? This crashes. Um, what have I missed? Host, blah, blah, blah. Global XO2. Global XO2. That's kind of weird, right? That sounds like I haven't defined a variable properly. Um, perfect. And this also seems like I have not set up this tag correctly because this tag is still hard coded to two loops, but now we're giving it more than two loops. So the draw never ends properly because it never hits an end of packet properly. So uh, if every scene is a tri every element, every index in scene is a triangle, this is just the number of things in the scene. So now if I run this, well, it loops. It loops. Scene I draw. Hmm. I guess these are drawing on top of each other, right? So let's, uh, hmm. Let's move this up and set this up when we like load. So yeah, so when, when we start the program, we'll just do some other crap. Uh, scene uh, one, see, scene two dot x equals negative 100, scene two dot, y equals negative 50 and then scene 3 uh, we'll move it to the right but also still up. What happens if I run this now? Oh, page fault. That is rough. Uh, scene, 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 scene. Is it because this is like defined below it? It shouldn't be, right? Oh, it might be because this runs, um... Yeah, there we go. That does make sense. Uh, wait, draw. Low execution error. Attempted to index a nil value. The buffer is a nil value. Line 62. Wait, that was line 62 in, um... In the other thing, wasn't it? I'm guessing this means that the color was nil. One of the things was nil. Uh, scene draw current, draw buffer. I think we might have to define this above as well because otherwise it doesn't get captured properly. Yeah, there we go. We've got a couple of triangles. Okay. Um, the other, there is also a problem here though because now we're setting these values directly. These are the values that are getting passed through to the try function. Uh, but when these get, oh no, they get, yeah. So these are still out right? Because we're giving fixed point values directly, but we're not converting them anywhere. So when we, do we want to do this here? We probably want to do this here, right? Um, it's actually x1 times 16, because we want to move it four bits across. Uh, so you multiply by two to the four, you, you move up by four bits. Uh, y1 times 16. x2 times 16. y2 times 16. x3 times 16. And you may not believe it, but y3 times 16. Now if I run this, our triangles are going to be a little bit bigger. Look at this. Isn't this cool? 
Isn't this really cool? I need to clean up this logging. This logging is going absolutely nuclear. But uh, yeah, you can see these buffers are getting filled out correctly. Everything looks good. Everything feels good, right? We have an awesome interface uh, into the PS2 here. This is amazing. This is amazing. Um, so meta tables would be nice. <laughs> I should probably do that. I feel like they would take less memory if I do this, but let's do something really crazy, okay? Let's uh, let's empty out our scene, right? Let's add a lot of triangles. So when we initialize, we're gonna say for i equals zero, i equals zero, i equals one. Let's say i equals one. Uh, let's go a thousand, and let's yeah. So I don't know. Lua for loops make me a little bit uncomfortable, but for I in the range of, of 1 to 1,000, uh, 1 of course because Lua is famously 1 indexed, we're going to get, um, what's actually, local dd equals 1,000, uh, so, hmm, if there are 1,000 spots, right, we need each triangle to be like that wide by that high and then move on to the next one, so we're going to say, we're going to say i starts at zero first off. We're going to be sane, civilized people. Um, dx. We're going to just like set up a few things really quickly here. 448 divided by dd. Um, okay. So, and actually we want this to be more than just dd, right? We want this to be... We want this to... Okay. Hold on. I'm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's let's slow down. Let's let's think about what we want to do. We want to tile across x and y uh, as many triangles as we can. So what we're actually going to say is a thousand horizontal triangles and a, th a thousand vertical triangles. That's a million triangles. Is it? Yeah. Let's let's tone that down an order of magnitude or two. Um. So we want to say for x equals zero, x less than the width, x increments by dx. Uh. For y equals zero y less than the total width, y increments by at delta y, uh, we're gonna put a triangle scene dot uh, table dot insert scene new try a new try, it's gonna be actually no, hold on we can't, because we need to move it, we can't just put it there, so let's say local tt equals new try uh, the it's just going to extend dx and dy, right? And we're going to put this in the table, but also we need to set the x to x and tt.y equals y. Right, now if you run this, oh boy, it's not happy. Um, because, I don't know, up value, x, so up value. So the up values are like how Lua does scoping, right? Or how it does like dynamic scoping. Um, okay. Draw 16, line 16. Yeah, because we didn't do enough here. So, actually, we want to say it extends out. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I, I, missed, I missed some numbers. I missed some numbers in conclusion. And can we... Oh, yeah, we got we've got too much in one draw buffer. Um, that's going to be a problem. So... We need to work in chunks. We need to work in chunks that are much, much smaller. How do we do this? How do we do this? We just lower this number for now. Okay, how big can this number go before things freak out? Can we draw 100? No. Can we do 5 in each direction? No. Uh, oh, hold on. Attention to index nil field. Frame event string. Hmm. Frame event attempt to index nil field. Huh. That's weird. That's very weird. I don't know where that's coming from because it must be coming from draw or where does this error come from? This actually isn't our isn't our stuff at all. Lua execution error. Frame event string sixty nine. I tend to index a nil value. So what's on line 69? Great line. Okay. I think this makes sense, right? I think this probably makes sense. Um, uh, do I have to iterate differently? Do I have to say uh, for i s in 
I pairs scene. Is that gonna, is this gonna fix it? Yeah, now we're just hitting a good old fashioned uh, teal beer, which again, feels like is, is what happens when you like overrun this boundary, right? We've got too much in this buffer, maybe. It, it, this feels like it's very, very limited if this is all we can have in a buffer. Let's say, let's say two. Uh, okay, let's say three. Okay, well our triangle generation is also a bit janky apparently. Let's say four. Four, no bueno, no dice. But how much is this, right? How many, how many is this? Uh, let's copy this out. Let's put it just like Vi. We're going to paste it in. So 168 quad words. But each one of these is a quad word. Uh, each one of these is two quad words. One quad word. One, two, three. Each one of these is one quad word, okay? Uh, so, 168. 168 times 16. So that's 2.6 kilobytes. That's actually quite a hefty buffer. Um, now, what's also... Hold on. Uh, 7F, F, F, F. F, F, F. Hmm. There's a magic number like this somewhere. Like, maybe, maybe this is a magic number. Maybe it's like two and a bit kilobytes. I'm not sure. Um, how do we anticipate? So how many are we allowed to have? Like, what, what, where do we max out here for triangles? Um, what is the most number of triangles that we can have in one packet? Is it a packet? I guess it's called a packet, right? What is our max? Um, well, actually, also, is this just a limitation of our draw buffer? 10,000. So this is 10,000 bytes. So no, so we're going to we're going to hit this limit first. We're going to hit this limit way first. Um hmm. Okay, 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 okay. What are we what are we doing? What are we doing? So I mean, first things first, we can make this a lot smaller now because we know that uh we're never going to do anything too dodgy. Teal bean this man. That's really crazy. I wonder I wonder what is actually causing that TLB miss, right? Is it just when we overflow this 2656 limit? So let's say 26, 2652 is the most... Actually, is that divisible by 16? Okay, I need to find the... Because this all fundamentally works in quad words, what I want is the biggest number less than 2656 that is divisible by 16. So we're just going to do some like really dumb grunt maths to do this. Um, okay, so Python, uh, let's go, so 2656 divided by 16, or mod 16, I guess. Uh, So let's go let's go 165 times 16 then. So 2640 is gonna be our magic number. 2640 quad words. And each triangle is gonna be six quad words. So uh six times sixteen. So 2640 divided by ninety-six, that gives us twenty-seven triangles. Okay. So hmm. Every twenty-seven triangles. How much is left over there? And a half. It's not enough. Okay, so every 26 triangles, we're going to make a new draw buffer. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so, frame start, right? And this gets submitted. Every 26 triangles will make a new draw buffer. And that way we'll always have enough room to end the frame. Every 27 would have enough. Let's do 27 triangles. Okay, okay, I've got a plan, I've got a plan. I don't know if this makes sense to anyone else, but I've got a plan. Um, we just need to think about how we do it. Okay, so... Let's do it the dumb way first. Count local try count equals zero. Uh, try try count plus equal. I always try and do plus equals in Lua. They, uh, it's not supported. Try count plus one. If try no try count equals try count plus one. If try count is greater than or equal to twenty six, then uh, we want to kick draw buffer zero draw buffer keep doing stuff 
just in a really high level way. So the first thing we do is actually send this draw buffer off. Um, DMA send DB. We send it to the graphics interchange, the GAF. Now we need to maybe get a new draw buffer. DB equals RM dot get draw buffer. And then try count equals zero. What happens if I run this now? This still freaks out, maybe? Hmm. It's interesting. Oh, because we, we keep hitting the old draw buffer. Current draw buffer equals db. Okay, let's see now. Still no good. What if I like lower this number a bunch? What if I say instead of 26, what if we do it every 20 triangles? Well, there aren't even 20 triangles here, right? Um, there's only four, there's only four, there's only 16 triangles here. So I guess we'll lower it more, but this still doesn't, some, something, something has gone strange here. Let's say 10. Okay. And that works. Okay. So we can fiddle around with the numbers later. Let's now raise our delta like a lot. Uh, oh, also, hold on, sorry, we want to start at x at negative 320 and go to positive 320 rather than uh, this because now we'll actually see everything on the screen, right? Oop. Maybe? Did that? Did I save this? I didn't save it. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we're tiling, boys. Uh, we are tiling two-dimensional space. Okay, so let's change our, our delta. Let's go back up to something big like 10, run it. Okay, we get triangles. We don't get we don't get good stuff, but we get something. Um, what if we go to fifty? We've got to improve our triangle algorithm, but okay. Yeah, now we're now something's going weird. Now something's going real weird. Uh, or oh, we've overflowed something. Something's gone sour. Something's gone really, really sour. <laughs> these are not what we these are not the right numbers where this is okay 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 is 20 okay 20 is not okay uh is 12 okay 12 is not okay oh no oh, 12 is okay it just takes it a little minute oh yeah because i'm i'm just like printing so much crap uh was x equals y. I'm confused why this doesn't tile the whole space, right? Like, surely it should go... Hmm. Anyway, this, this is interesting. We'll, we'll play around with this a little bit more. Uh, for now, I need to disable some of this logging. This is a little bit insane. So let's go to a file, DMA, Lua. I really need to exclude, by the way. If anyone knows how to exclude uh, these results from Fuzzy Finder reasonably, please let me know. I would be very interested in that. Um... I always find myself opening them by mistake. Okay, so print buffer. This can go. This is a huge culprit for this stuff. And then I think also uh, draw lure dot c. Yeah, these these can just get like commented out. These are kind of white noise. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. These aren't fine. We don't want to write something out every time we move this buffer up. Also, every time we Oh, no, every time we clear the screen's okay. That only happens once per frame. Okay, so now if we build, uh, this looks good. Now if we run, yeah, now we're going a bit faster. Okay, we can get rid of our DMA send. We can get rid of some of these prints as well from um, from the Lua side. So our logs that have this are from the C side, and our logs that have nothing, like no prefix, are from the Lua side. Uh, DMA send. Okay, that needs to go. That needs to go. Uh here we are. Really interesting information to have, but not all the time. Not all the time. What was the other one? Um, oh yeah, stuff from the actual Lua, right? So if we go to gif.lua or gif.lua, if that's how you roll. Uh, yeah, I had I had to do a bit of testing with this to make sure everything like balanced nicely, right? Um, Alright, let's build this and let's run it. That seems a lot smoother. 
seems a lot smoother. We're just drawing something every uh, every frame. That's cool. And I put some logs in here for when we're waiting for a draw and when we're waiting for VSync because uh, it wasn't obvious if we weren't drawing. And because uh, one of one of the things we actually call in this, right? Uh, if I just exit out of here. If I look at ps2lua.c, right, we wait for a draw to finish and then we vsync. But uh, when you call this, like it, it, either one of these things can hang forever if you haven't set up your graphic synthesizer and your draw buffers properly, and it wasn't obvious which. So I just put a nice little log here. We can actually we can actually just like axe these for now too. Um, less logging is good. So this is going to hit a comfortable 60 fps, and I really want to know why. Uh, I really want to know why this has not extended all the way out to the edge of the screen. So we're just gonna... Ooh, we're just gonna like lower this number down to 2 and see if we can debug this logic. Because it works for 2. Okay, so why does it stop working when this number gets big? Uh, does it work for 8? It works well for 8. So where does this fall apart? It falls apart at like 10, right? It falls apart at 9. What breaks at 9? Uh, what breaks at 9 is this, right? What breaks at 9? No, no, of course not. Uh, what break? We have 81 triangles at 9, so this logic gets hit way before then. Um, so what happens if I run it? Do you know what I need? I actually need my buffer print back. <laughs> but we can always enable it. DMA Lua, uh, print buffer. Okay, so... This is a lot of a lot of spinning, a lot of noise. Uh, there. Yeah, this looks like overflowing to me. But why would it be overflowing, right? Nothing should overflow here. Nothing should. There's something wrong with my algorithm. There has to be, surely. But dx, it's just a fraction of. Weird. I guess if these aren't whole numbers, right? What actually, let's go math.floor. Let's make sure we're working in the whole number world. That might make this a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. Okay, 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 okay. So, now we're cooking with gas. So let's put this back up to like a big number, like 40. Yeah, there we go. Oh. So the problem was uh, numbers, right? If these are floating point numbers, the bit hacking falls apart. Um, and we're relying on a lot of just dirty bit hacking here. So let's go back to DMA Lua, get rid of this print buffer. Uh, we're going to go back to draw Lua, run it again. Uh, we're going to build it and run it again. Beautiful. Okay, that actually seems to have slowed down a little, right? So if I look at this, what's our FPS? Apparently still hitting 60 FPS. It's kind of crazy. Uh, what if we go to like 100? What if we go big? Takes a long time to get started. This is not 60 FPS. Uh, this number is, is very misleading. So 100 times 100, 100 squared, right? Um, that's, it's 10,000, 10,000 triangles per frame times 60. So that's uh, 600,000 triangles per second, right? Now I've got some theoretical numbers up here. Uh, let's have a quick look. The theoretical numbers given by the Sony manuals themselves, right? Uh, where are we? Maximum performance, page 18. Let's pull this up on screen. Uh, I've already shown this stuff before. If I'm going to get the R suit off me, I've already crossed that bridge. So, maximum performance, okay? So, untextured, unshaded, uh, non anti aliased triangles. In theory, we could hit 65 million of these per second. We're currently pushing for 60,000. That's a lot less. Um, but we're doing it in a really, really inefficient way. Okay, so, you know, I guess a good number to hit, right? If we can hit a million triangles per second, then we're, we're doing something right, you know? <laughs> um, I don't know how we're going to measure how many triangles we've drawn per second, right? But I, I want to see order of magnitude be similar. I, I don't, or maybe at least just be off by one, right? Like, if we're going to be off, make it a hundred thousand, uh, yeah, make it a hundred thousand, right? 
I'll make it X hundred thousand or, or a million. But 10,000 10, really is not where I want to be with this right now. Um, that's that's kind of depressing. But also, there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't need to go in here. This loop, I'm expecting maybe kind of slow. Um, building, building our buffers, where every single word in our buffer requires a function call, that's really slow. So we could speed this up with some C code behind the scenes, and that would actually be easy to do, right? For example, uh, you would... If you want to speed this up, implement this in C, right? Or have this call a C function. Sorry, I've got a hair in my mouth. Make this this try a C function, right? Uh, they, they can be very efficient and very ruthless. That would cut a lot of this stuff down. Uh, or maybe implement this whole loop in C, right? And also you can probably use a more efficient... So when we build our gift tags, we're using packed mode. You could actually use regular slow mode, which... Uh, it has a lot more data density, right? So you could fit twice as many triangles per packet. You could double this number right out the gate, right out the gate. And actually, let's see if we can raise this number because having this number be low is a little bit of a problem for me. So what if we go to fifteen, right? Does this not work? This does work. Ooh, excellent. Uh, so what was my number before? Twenty twenty six. Okay, now, now he's unhappy with me. Now he's unhappy with me. Uh, that was really interesting though, right? So we can go higher. What if we go to 16? That works. Uh, what if we go to 18? That works. What if we go to... Oh, this is exciting stuff. And again, remember how hard this stuff was to iterate on when I was doing it in C? Now I can just throw things at the wall. What if I go to not 120? What if I go to 20? Where does this where does this cap out? Where does this limit end? How effectively can I pack these triangles together uh, into packets that are being sent to the GS? 21? Fine. So it's going to be around this like 22, 23 mark where things are going to fall out. Maybe 24. Maybe I was just like off by one or two with my calculations. Oh no, there we go. 22. So we've got to do 21. 21 triangles per pack it, right? And then we got to split them up. So this is interesting, right? Uh, I know if you look at uh, like the model data for Ratchet and Clank, right? It has to split models up into smaller pieces. And I'm guessing most games would have had to do this with such an aggressive, uh, an aggressive limit here, right? But again, I'm packing things very inefficiently, very, very inefficiently. Um, there's, there's got to be something wrong here. This, this has to be, this, this, this feels way too low way too low. It's weird. Anyway, that's something to work out later. For now it works, uh, and that's really cool. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. So my thought is, you could actually build a whole game with this interface, right? Like, this is enough to, to build something actually playable, right? Well, the only thing missing is uh, getting the pad interface back in, but I have this, like, I've got this done on the C side, right? Like, is a button being held or not? Uh, I've already played around with this in the C side. If I can expose this to Lua, I could make a very simple game just with colors, just with shapes, but that would be doable. And so maybe this is what we should do. Uh, I think this has been a fun little experiment, right? I think getting here is awesome. Uh, and I'm really happy to see it. Like, this is a lot of triangles. I'm gonna, at some point in the next few days, I'm gonna try and run this on my PS2. But, uh, yeah, I'm getting ready to merge this Lua branch. I think, you know, it's hard to think about what more I could ask from this branch than an interface like this. Um, but yeah, so the, the next steps from here are to do some, like, crappy fake 3D and then to start integrating C code back into this so that I can, I can do this faster and more efficiently and work out why this uh, this is behaving so badly, right? Why am I hitting this limit here? It's no good. Um, I might actually just like, could it, could it just be my draw buffer's too small? Is that it? I shouldn't need an eight kilobyte draw buffer just to have like 22 triangles per, per buffer. Yeah, no, nah, it's not the problem. It's not the problem. Okay, well, I've got some things to investigate. I've got some more things to investigate. Uh, I know I did a lot of work off stream for this episode, uh, it just is how it happened. You know, I was kind of like bleeding from my hands yesterday. I didn't really feel like going on the air, um, but it was a lot of fun to do.
Uh, and yeah, this stuff's going to shape up and I'm going to start getting some interactive things happening soon, right? And the next thing I really want to play with and the thing that I really struggled with in the past because I had no good way to iterate, uh, the, the next thing once I kind of get this packaged up and get the pad working in and can build something interactive from here, uh, I want to play around with textures, right? Because textures are awkward. It would be really cool to be able to just like generate textures in Lua, send them across, you know, describe that transfer in Lua. Uh, it would save me a lot of headaches, I think. Because when I was trying to do it in C, when I was trying to generate a texture in C and then transfer it across and build the buffers in C, it was kind of gross. So yeah, I'm, I have high hopes for this interface. I have really high hopes for this interface. And I love the idea that you could actually build something and start just with the simplest possible graphics primitives, like literally putting bits uh, you know, individual words into a buffer and then end up with an interactive program at the end. So, I, I you know, I, I'm going to play around with this. I've got some really cool ideas. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. This has been another fun little stream. We've got something to actually show for it, right? Look at this. Uh, oh, don't look at this. Look at this. I'm proud of this. It doesn't look like much, but I'm proud of this. Uh, and it's also very, very underperformant. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm Tom. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, be sure to check out my stream. Be sure to check out my website. If you're enjoying this, give me a follow. Uh, give me a subscribe on YouTube. All that really good stuff. Oof, mad supervillain stopping by just to see me say goodbye. Um, you should rewind and have a look at some of the stuff. It's very cool and it's coming together. So cheers, guys. I'll see you next time.